Two things before we get started with today's topic. First of all, if you celebrate the holidays, I hope you have a wonderful time with family and friends. If the holidays are hard for you, just hang in there the best that you can. I hope you all have a fantastic new year filled with love, abundance, and joy. May you be healthy, may you be happy, may you be free from worry. Second, myself and Steve and the entire Ripple team want to thank you for supporting us this past year. Whether you bought a tutorial or a plugin or donated to the Super Chat during Ripple Live or subscribed to our channel or even left a comment, your participation is what lets us do what we love to do, which is to teach and provide tools to help you tell your stories. So thank you. Now, today's kind of a big day if you use Fonica Pro or Motion, and that's because the Pixelmator team has released an update to Pixelmator Pro that includes the ability to export motion projects. Why is that a big deal? Well, that's what today's MacBreak Studio is all about. All right, here we are in Pixelmator Pro. Now, I've used Pixelmator for years. I still have Pixelmator Classic. I've always paid for it. They provided me a beta version here so I could do this testing and make this MacBreak Studio. They haven't paid me anything. They haven't seen any of this. So these are all my opinions. And Pixelmator Pro is a deep image editing application, but we're actually not gonna do any image editing here. I'm gonna focus on the vector capabilities and how they relate to exporting to motion projects. Specifically, we're gonna look at shapes, text, and SVG import. So let's start out with shapes. From the insert menu, you can choose from a small list of shapes. I'll choose a rounded rectangle. You can change the scale of the shape. You can use this little control here to change the roundness. This is called a smart shape because it has a little control here. Then over in the inspector, you can disable or turn on the fill, change the color, disable or enable the stroke, change its color, its opacity, its thickness, etc. Anything that you would normally expect here. I'm going to tap V just to get back to the arrow tool and move this over. Alternatively, you can go down over here and click this pop-up menu here and select those same set of shapes. Or if you choose this shape here, we basically get an inspector with a bunch of different shapes here. I'm gonna add this one here, the polygon, and I'll click and drag and hold the shift key down, or I'll undo that. If you just click once, it just makes one for you right there. Then I'll hold the shift key down to scale proportionally. And for this one, instead of filling with color, I'm gonna fill it with a gradient. And you can see you could choose your gradient colors and you can adjust the spread of that gradient, and I'll give it a different outside outline. And let's add one more here. I'm gonna add this star shape. And I'll fill that with a color. Give it a different outline. And the star shape has two little controls here, one that controls how many points on the star and one that controls how far out those points go. V, I'll move this over. We have nice little dynamic guides for aligning objects. I can select them all and choose arrange distributed objects, vertical centers, and then move these guys over here. Now, from the file menu, I'll choose export. And here under format, we can choose a motion project. I'll just call this simple shapes. And I'm exporting to a folder that I've created for these exports. If I now open that motion project, we get the exact same shapes we exported, including the background later that I turned off. I'll press shift T for transparency, just so you can see the transparent background there. And let's look at each of these. If I select the rounded rectangle and go to the inspector, we can see it is a motion shape. So we can change the color just like we did in Pixelmator Pro. We can change the outline color. We can change the outline width. We can go to the geometry tab. We can adjust the roundness. We can right click and choose edit points. 
and we can adjust the individual points of the shape, just like any other motion shape. With the polygon, the gradient came through. We can see the gradient here, so we can edit the gradient either there or in the inspector, edit gradient, and we have all of our motion controls for adjusting shapes. So all these shapes created in Pixelmator Pro come straight through as shapes in motion. Now, you can create shapes in motion just fine. I can select the rectangle tool and create my own shape in motion. And I can choose to add an outline to that and give it a color and change its width. And I can change the inside color and I can go to the geometry and change the roundness, you know, and I can kind of do the same thing, but you get more options in Pixelmator Pro. Uh, for example, with this star, this is a little harder to create in motion. We do have some uh, library shapes, but they're not very extensive. Here they are here, and there's a hexagon, an octagon, and there's a star, but you can't really create this in motion. And kind of a cool thing you can do in motion, though, once you've created this in Pixelmator Pro, if I go to my geometry tab and adjust the roundness, we can adjust that star in a way that you just really couldn't do in the Pixelmator Pro or motion by themselves, but by using them together, you can do some interesting things. And once again, I can right click and choose edit points and I've got access to all of the individual points and can manipulate them as I want. So that's great, but it goes quite a bit deeper. Let's go back to Pixelmator Pro. You can of course also draw your own shapes with a pen tool, just like you would do in motion. And I'll right click and choose make editable. And you can adjust each of these Bezier points, just like you would do in motion. You can right click and make them sharp or smooth and anything you're used to doing, you can do right here in Pixelmator Pro. So you can draw the shape, but you can also make compound shapes. And this is kind of interesting. So if we go back to shapes and I'll just choose a rounded rectangle and I'll choose an arrow shape and I'll choose this plus shape. And if I overlap them, maybe I'll scale this one up. I can select them all. And then with the shape tool selected, we have different ways we can combine them by having them overlap, having them intersect and select one shape. Basically it cuts another shape out, look at the intersection between them or the opposite of that. So I'm just gonna combine these into a single shape. And this is something you could do in motion, but it's a little bit more complicated because you need to often create mass to do so, and you don't really get access to the control points in the same way. But what's cool here in Pixelmator Pro is, even though this is now a single shape with a single outline, I can still go into this group and select the individual items and adjust them in any way that I want to. And then once we send that to motion, it'll be available as a single shape. In addition, if we go back to the shapes, we saw we have these basic shapes here, but we also have these shapes in several categories, work, education, science, and nature. So for instance, if I go back to science, I'll select this spaceship here, and I'll add it in here. And now let's go ahead and I'll choose to export this, and I'll just call it more shapes and open that in motion. And our path is complete here. We can edit the points just as we did in Pixelmator Pro, so it comes through perfectly. Our compound shape is a single shape, and there we can see all of the separate points, all the shift key down to select multiple ones at the same time, and I can move those and adjust them, but we get a single compound shape, which could be a little more complicated to create in motion. And then this rocket ship, comes in as a group with multiple shapes. We've got the overall rocket ship, we've got this little back part right here, and then we've got this part uh, for the window. And here's an example where I took that rocket ship and I also used a planet, which is another built-in shape in Pixelmator Pro, exported the motion, just threw a gradient background in, added a emitter for the rocket ship and a behavior to orbit the rocket ship around the planet. And then I used a wriggle behavior on the shapes. So the key thing about all of this is that once you export shapes from Pixelmator Pro to Motion, you can use all of Motion's powerful tools for animating shapes and for adjusting them. 
Next, I want to show you three things you can do with text in Pixelmator Pro and then use in motion. The first is text on a path. So I'll select the pen tool and I'll just drag out a little arch here and then I'll press escape so I just get a line. I'm going to turn off the fill and I'll leave the stroke on for a moment just so we can still see the line. Otherwise, we won't be able to see it. Then for the text tool, I'm going to select the path type for text. And when I move my mouse over this path, the icon changes, I can click and I get some text. I'll scale that down and I can stretch out the path along there. And I can move that text anywhere along that path. And of course I can edit the text and change the font. So that will all come into motion and that's great. But you know, in motion, you can do the same thing, right? You can create a shape and you can have text uh, animate along that path just fine in motion. But check this out. If I go back to our different shape options and let's go choose a shape like, say this guy right here, this magnet, and I'll draw it out. So with this shape selected, I'll select that path text again. And here I can place the text along this path. I'll shrink it down a little bit. And notice it can go all the way along that path. So you can easily place the text on any kind of shape. Here I'll take this Wi-Fi signal and the text and place it here. And I can drag to go here all the way around. And the text can go anywhere on that path. Great, so let's go ahead and export these to Motion. And they come through exactly the same way. And for the, each of these text objects, if I go to the inspector and go to the layout, I can animate that path offset to move that text along the path. And notice it moves along the entire path. I'll also select here the text on the Wi-Fi signal and I'll change it. And once again, use this path offset, which you can keyframe or use behaviors to animate. So text on a path, you can do it in motion, but by doing the Pixelmator Pro, you can add it to different types of shapes that take more work to do in motion. Now here's something really cool. This is a text object. I can double click on it and edit the text. And I've just chosen a color and shape. So right now it's text. And if I were to export this, it would come into motion as text and you can animate it the way you would animate text, etc. And that's great. But there's another option. If I go up to the format menu, I can choose to convert this text into shapes. Once I do that, it creates a folder and every letter is a shape. And the great thing about that is right here in Pixelmator Pro, I can right click and make editable and I can adjust these individual points if I wanna modify any one of those letters. But now that they're shapes, let's export this to motion. So in motion, we get a group and every letter is a shape. And letters that have, for instance, holes in them like this O automatically have a mask to cut out the inside of that shape, which is really cool. The R here has that little mask, the Bezier mask there, et cetera, as needed. So because these are now shapes, you can't animate them as text, but you can modify them in ways that you couldn't if they were text objects inside of motion. So any one I click on, I can change the color of that particular one. I can right click on it and edit the points and adjust those points to change that particular shape to something else. And then for example, I could create some animation. Maybe I'll turn off the fill for this letter. I'll turn on the outline and I'll add a shape right on and trim it to about there so that that one letter that we've modified now writes on. So hopefully it gives you some sense of what's possible just with converting text to shapes in Pixelmator Pro and then exporting those to motion. Okay, now we come to what I think is the coolest and most useful part of this motion export capability in the new Pixelmator Pro, and that is SVG import. So if you have vector artwork created in another application, for instance, Adobe Illustrator, Affinity Designer, or other vector-based applications, 
If you export that as an SVG, you can import that into Pixelmator Pro. So here I've done that. I have some original Illustrator files in this folder and I've exported them as .svg. Press the spacebar to do a quick lock on a few of them so you can see what they look like before doing anything with them. So let's start with this Vimeo one. So what I'm gonna do is drag this into Pixelmator Pro. I'll scale it up. And because it's an SVG, check this out. It created a folder and inside is each letter as a path. So all I did was drag it in and now we're gonna export it to motion. Export to a motion project, I'll call it Vimeo logo. And then let's open that up in motion. And here we are in motion with the same group and with paths for each of our letters. And for letters that require it, like the O, we've got an automatic Bezier mask or the E, same thing. And the I is actually a group of two separate shapes. So because these are shapes, we can now use all of the tools at our disposal for modifying them, styling them, and animating them. For example, I'll take the V, I'll go to the inspector, I'll turn off the fill, I'll turn on the outline, and I'll sample the same blue color. Maybe I'll thicken it up a little bit. And this time, instead of the write-on behavior, what I'm gonna do is change that outline from a solid to an airbrush and tighten up that brush profile so it's a little more solid. And then I'm gonna use the behaviors, shape, sequence, paint behavior to animate it. I'll move the play it forward a bit, tap O. Go back to the start. I'm gonna add the width, for instance, and we'll say we want it to start at zero. And now that letter will draw on by getting wider as it draws on. Another thing we could do is I'll select the O, I'll go to behaviors, shape, and I'll choose wriggle shape. Let me set an out point for my playhead and play that back and I'll reduce the amount quite a bit and I'll increase the frequency and the noisiness. And I'll press command forward slash so we don't see the outline and I'll reduce the amount even more. Just to get an idea of a few things that you can do. Now, of course, because these are shapes and they're independent of each other, we can also move and scale and rotate and animate their position as well. So you're free to go crazy and take any kind of artwork and then modify it and animate it in motion. With apologies to Vimeo, here's a little example of some animation with behaviors and keyframes. Let's look at one more example. It's a little more complex. I'm gonna take this logo here and bring it into Pixelmator Pro. So I'll simply drag it in, and you can see it's very, very small by default, but because it's a vector object, hold down Shift and Option and scale it up, and center it, and if we look in the group here, we can see that there are individual paths for every single part of this. We can see all the letters, we can see the different parts of the squid, and then each of these little paths are these little dashes all the way around. So a lot of different shapes, but this gives us a lot of flexibility in motion. Let's export this as a motion project and check it out in motion. Here we are in motion. We've got the same group with all these different elements in it. One thing we can do is I'll select the first path on these dashes around the edge, and I'll go down to the last one. They're nicely organized. Shift click to select them all, shift command G to put them in a group. Just to make things easier to look at, I can close that. If I toggle that visibility off and on, that's the entire outline there. And now we can select each of these parts and work with them. You may notice it doesn't look quite exactly the same as it did in Pixelmator. And sometimes you need to just double check everything. Here it didn't quite fit this white outline uh, here and here quite right. So really easy fix for that. Here we have the bottom part of the squid. And I'll just turn on the outline. 
And then here we have the top part and I'll turn on the outline. And we could also make this a little bit wider. I think maybe it was, let's do about 12 for each. There we go. Now, because these are each separate elements, we can modify them, move them around and animate them separately. As a simple example, we could take this little eye in the middle. I'll hit command forward slash so we don't see the outline there. Go to the properties tab and I could animate that eye's position to move around. So just to give you an idea of what you can do, and of course, each of the letters is an individual shape and can be manipulated and animated. And here's an example where I used a background gradient and a few masks in order to create this animation with the addition of an overshoot behavior and a wriggle behavior on the shapes. Now, I didn't even touch on any of Pixelmator Pro's deep image editing capabilities. So check out their website for details. The built-in help is also really good. Right now it's on sale for just 20 bucks, which to me makes it a no-brainer if you use Motion or if you use Final Cut Pro and if you're considering using Motion. So I would take advantage of it, but I'd like to know what you think. Please leave us a comment below and we'll see you next time and next year here on MacBreak Studio.